What's up? Welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with my 2024 Emmys recap. Yes, the Emmys finally happened after the strikes-related delay. As a result, we just got the 2024 Emmys for the 2023-ish Emmy period. Unfortunately, these Emmys are following the Critics' Choice Awards and the Golden Globes, which just happened earlier this month. So we basically saw all these wins that we got with the Emmys happen already. Uh, and thus, it really led to a sense of inevitability, of predictability, even more so than the Emmys, I think, have had in the past few years where, like this past year, a small number of shows dominated all the wins. Now, in the case of the 2024 Emmys, those three shows that dominated happened to be literally my number three, uh, t- my top three best shows of the year per my best TV shows of the year list. Succession, The Bear, and Beef, respectively, dominated drama series, comedy series, and limited series. We saw that one coming. Now, if you look at the breakdown of the wins by uh, network, uh, also pretty predictable here. At the top, you have HBO slash Max with 31 wins, Netflix with 22 wins, FX with 16, Apple with 10, Disney 9, Amazon 6. About what you expect. But speaking to the domination of just a few series, The Bear won 10 times, literally all 10 awards it was up for. Beef won 8, The Last of Us won 8, and Succession won 6. So it kind of went as we you know, expected. You know, looking back to my predictions, I got almost everything I expected right. And that's not that I did an amazing job or anything. It was more so that it was quite predictable and also quite chalk. chalk. There wasn't much of a surprise. A drama series, uh, Succession won for in its fourth and final season. Best actor in a drama series, Kieran Culkin, did win over uh, his castmate, Jeremy Strong, uh, which I think is pretty nice. Culkin getting a win. Strong had already previously won this uh, for a past Succession season. Unfortunately, this means Bob Odenkirk never got the win for Better Call Saul, his last opportunity, alas. Uh, Pedro Pascal didn't win for The Last of Us, but it'll probably be the favorite, I think, in this category with season two in a two Emmys time once that show comes out next year, um, you'd have to imagine, with Succession now out of the mix. Best Drama Series Actress went to Sarah Snook. Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series went to Matthew McFadden, his second win. Pretty great. Uh, then Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. This is one where I didn't have like as good of a feel. I thought maybe Elizabeth Debicki could win for The Crown for her depiction of Princess Diana, but no, it went to Jennifer Coolidge for The White Lotus Season 2, uh, alas. So that was kind of what was expected. I was thinking maybe there could be a surprise there, but we didn't even get it there. Uh, the comedy series, The Bear Wins, and this is for The Bear Season 1 at the Emmys, even though the Globes and the Craig's Choice just gave out awards for The Bear Season 2. Speaks to the kind of archaic nature of the Emmy uh, eligibility period, the June-to-June calendar, and then, of course, exacerbated by the strike related delays. It would be nice if we could just kind of move past these uh, restrictions and do a strict calendar year type award. Alas, we'll see. Uh, then actors in a comedy series went to Quinta Brunson for Abbott Elementary, as expected. Actor in the comedy series went to Jeremy Allen White for The Bear. Supporting actor comedy, Evan Moss Baccarat for The Bear. Supporting actress comedy, Ayo e. Dabiri for The Bear. Just a domination right there. Uh, then limited series went to Beef on Netflix. Amazing show. I thought maybe Dahmer could sneak ahead, but that was you know Netflix on Netflix. So kind of made sense that Beef was going to come out on top. And then uh, actress limited series, Ali Wong, actor limited series, Stephen Yun, both for beef, as expected. And then supporting actor limited series, you have Paul Walter Hauser for Blackbird on Apple. That was one where I didn't have as good of a feel that Hauser kind of felt like the default pick. That's what I went with, but not the strongest year for that category, but that's kind of how it went. And then similarly, supporting actress limited series, I went with Nisi Nash Betts for Dahmer, which is who ended up winning. Uh, again, kind of felt like that was kind of the default choice. Nothing too crazy about the category. And then furthermore from there, you know, writing for comedy, writing for drama, writing for limited, as well as directing for those three went to Succession, Beef, and uh, The Bear, respectively. Um, in terms of any other, like, I think big changes, you had um, Best uh, Variety Series went to John Oliver, John Oliver moving to variety series, leaving the late night category. As a result, uh, John Oliver beats SNL normally, which runs away with that category every year. And because John Oliver was no longer in talk series, uh, Trevor Noah 
wins instead, beating out Kimmel, Myers, Colbert, and Jon Stewart. And then, yeah, RuPaul wins reality, as, as usual. And, yeah, I mean, it's... And, uh, Elton John got his EGOT for winning the Emmy for Best Variety Special Live for his farewell from Dodger Stadium. Um, shout out Elton John. I kind of think when you get an EGOT with kind of lame-ass stuff, it's kind of dumb. Like, he didn't do TV. He was doing his music stuff. It just happened to be filmed. It's kind of a, a weak, like, lesser EGOT to me. And he's far from the only person who gets EGOT this way. But just that's just my two cents on that. So, yeah, I mean, the Emmys, you know, I feel like the last, like, four years or so, it's been a handful of shows that kind of dominate. I think that's kind of just the way it's always going to be, partially due to group thing, but also kind of just things coalesce. You know, the best things or the most popular things usually rise up. It is what it is. I think... A better fix or thing we can change the Emmys is getting that calendar in order, making it make sense because we don't have to worry about the f- traditional fall TV schedule anymore, which is the reason the Emmys are the way they are. Just do a traditional calendar year like the Grammys, like the Oscars, and I think just kind of get on with it. Personally, I would like the Emmys to take place around now, have this general award season early year type thing where the Emmys oscars and grammys all take place in like a two and a half month period i think that's a good idea although if the emmys want to go back to the fall whatever personally i think it just makes more sense to switch out the calendar so that's kind of what i want to see ultimately again i have no gripes with who won it's what i expected but also more or less what i would have picked by and large you know uh the three best shows of 2023 dominated i mean We've had worse things happen at the award shows, but let me know. What do you want to see next for the Emmys? Do you agree with my changes? Are you happy with the winners? Let me know. And for more award season predictions, including the Grammys and Oscars coming up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.